Hi guys, welcome back and I hope you're going to enjoy and benefit from my analysis of yet another video by the Muslim apologist who on Speaker's Corner and YouTube goes by the name of Mohammed Hijab. In the video I'm commenting on, which is why atheism is becoming popular in the West, in the LSE University of London, he is shown lecturing some Muslims, Muslim men on one side, Muslim women on the other. And our intellectual featherweights, Adnan Rashid and Ali Dawa in the front seats, eagerly lapping up this drivel. He demonstrates how primitive his line of thinking actually is and how he has managed to reduce his interpretation of reality to an amazingly simplistic model. So the video starts off when hijab is already in full swing, missing the beginning somehow. But I don't think we've missed much. Is it because they're speaking the truth? Is it because atheism actually carries intellectual currency? No, it's simply because the white man has been able to take over the Americas. So it's all about the white man, the post-colonial white man. <laughs> now, <laughs> I admit, I don't understand this white man thingy, okay? But I sort of guess it's supposed to be a derogatory term because some nations in the past had colonies, like, like Muslims conquered other nations and they are still occupied by Islam. Now, we experience this emotional propaganda frequently with this hijab guy as he lacks factual arguments and rarely even understands what he himself is saying. The contents of his lecture is largely, well, it's largely nonsense. And it's nonsense I've covered before, where he talks about atheists, science and philosophy when he does not understand anything about atheist science and philosophy. <laughs> it's simply embarrassing. In spite of all the big words he uses, he's actually a simpleton, a primitive and simple guy, uneducated and ignorant, and just like Tzortes a few years ago, able to attract followers who are superficially attracted by his ability to articulate himself slightly better than someone like, well, Ali Dawa or Adnan Rashid. And he himself has decided to show himself in this video how he is whining and crying like a little girl, complaining about those human beings who don't buy into his favorite fairy tale. Which actually, this is 80% of them. You know, 80% of humanity doesn't really approve of what Islam is teaching. And a sizable chunk of this 80%, they reject all claims of supernatural monsters in the sky making demands. That's non-believers. And this chunk seems to be his biggest worry because he can't find a way around reason, logics and rationality. Now, okay, I don't have a God belief, okay? So, like, I don't believe gods exist or ghosts exist or dragons exist. But there is no building dedicated to non-dragon believers where those who don't believe dragons exist meet on a regular basis and perform common rituals and chants reciting a dragonist scripture expecting some sort of reward for this. So not believing something is not and cannot be a belief itself. And then, well, to make matters worse, theists, the, the humans plus the God belief, have decided that humans without this God belief not only need to label themselves as something they are not, but also need to adhere to an ism that they don't perform. So the not believing a dragonist is now performing, adhering to, and using a dragonism. <laughs> That's how stupid this is. So I think it becomes very clear that all these terms are nonsensical and stem from days when being a theist was the norm. Okay, let's go back to why atheism is becoming popular in the West, okay? Now, he starts off with, do we need to answer that question? Well, no. It's simply because the white man has been able to take over the Americas. No, <laughs> come on. And <laughs> listen to this. No, it's simply because... The white man has been able to take over the Americas and, uh, and had the Industrial Revolution. It's a very another, another big thing, by the way. Yeah, and therefore they've concentrated their economic and military power, which is expanded into, yeah, which is expanded into um, also media power in the New Age. So we've had to listen. We've had to listen. It's really interesting. And that's his reasoning. 
That is, seriously, this is his reasoning. Because the white man has been able to take over America's and then concentrate it, everything. That's why atheism is becoming popular. That's his explanation. And now he says, well, this, he tries to explain it. He says, well, it's really interesting. But every time he says it's really interesting, it's, no, it's not. It's painful, whatever comes after his, it's really interesting. And he comes up with, I don't, I don't know, now I'm going to skip all this, because the idea of homosexuality, when he doesn't really, um, this, this doesn't make sense, because blacks don't, because they were slaves, and oh my goodness, this is so terrible. So he, he says that's why there is atheism, and a hundred years ago he wouldn't even begin to talk about atheism. I'm talking about the idea, post-colonial white man. The white man wants us to just change in his image. That's why atheism was on the increase, and that is why we've had to answer questions about atheism. Okay? If we lived 100 years ago, I would not even begin talking about atheism. And then for him, it's all about superpowers and atheism, superpowers and... No. Atheism is a lack of belief in God, yeah? Or a creator, a sustainer. The atheist wants us to answer the question of how can you prove God exists? No, the atheist does not want you to answer anything how you can prove God exists. Now, I for one, I only want one single thing, and that is some sort of compelling, convincing evidence that somehow explains and shows and demonstrates that your particular God exists. I mean, you're not going to prove to me that Zeus exists. You're not going to prove to me Thor or Yahweh or one of the other gods exists. No, I can't even expect this from you. But you are the one that believes your favorite sky daddy exists. So why can't you prove it? Or why can't you provide evidence that shows, yes, this God exists? Instead of this nonsense with cosmological, no, the cosmological argument or ontological or... All, all these different things that you have, those are not convincing. They're ancient, old, ridiculous. They've been debunked, refuted, rebutted for I don't know how many centuries. Don't come and repeat them. And then, of course, at 255, this is exactly what he does. And frankly, you guys know the arguments, okay? I don't want to bore you with the arguments. He says, you know the arguments that I don't want to bore you with, but he lists them anyway. And then later, in great detail and depth, because he does not have anything substantial or convincing. Instead, he has to go, I mean, Isaac Newton, I mean, who, by the way, was a total asshole as a human being, but he was a, he was a genius, okay? But he, I, I wouldn't, I don't know, remember him as a philosopher. I would, I mean, he did a lot of things, but yes, he did some philosophy, but this is not what I would um, remember him for. I mean, you had Berkeley, Descartes, Hume, Leibniz, Locke, Spinoza, all these other guys who were living then around him sometime. But I, this is not where I would say Isaac Newton was the philosopher. The, the others were, yeah, but he wasn't. But anyway, if you bring up all these old arguments, even if they're not Muslim-specific, why do you do that? Why do you need to mention other people? Yes, Isaac Newton was a theist because at that time everybody was a theist. That was the norm. That's the way how everybody was expected to be a Christian in where he was living. The same way as there's a lot of places in the States. If you move there, the first question people are, what church do you go to? Like in Europe, this is not an expectation. And in the rest of the world, it is not an expectation either. So it's only in very few places where you have this. And these arguments are not just Muslim arguments, clearly they're not. Leib Leibniz, Newton, very many philosophers believed in these things and they would argue for the things that we're arguing for today. But it seems his brain is firmly stuck in the Middle Ages. And now he's trying to explain why atheism grew and that is that there's like a couple of things, like the weakness of the Christian tradition to deal with medicine and science. And Not people really. moved away from Christianity and kind of lost faith because of its inability to deal with scientific f phenomena and medicine of these things. Or an increase in philosophy, the Enlightenment period. And then, <clears throat> I don't know, he comes up with a third one, like Christianity is not true, therefore no religion is true. No, why, why doesn't he ask me... 
Why doesn't he come to me and say, let's have a conversation. Let's talk about your beliefs. Let's talk about why you are an atheist. Let's, let's talk about why, what, what is an atheist, why you are one. What, why is that such a um, com- compelling way of living your life? And I will explain it to him. Okay, that means that all his old arguments are then gone by the wayside and he has to really start thinking, but at least then he knows what the facts are and he doesn't embarrass himself with his stupidity, the way that he is doing in this video. For the layman in the West, if Christianity is not true, then there is no religion that's true. He, he says, for the layman in the West, it's Christianity failing the... Oh boy, no, 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 that's not the way that it works. People do not believe in God because there's no good reason to do so. And that is it. It's not nothing to do with Christianity. Nowhere on the planet is it because, well, Christianity can't explain it, so I'm going to do... No, it's not. Atheism is, is a natural response to it. And then he, then he says, atheism is a natural response to this, a logical response to Christianity being wrong. No. It's, it's simply not. Why would why would I look for God alternatives? It's not that the idea of no God, no creator, no cause, no sustainer, no maintainer actually carries any intellectual weight. You know, this is nonsensical. It's, it's not about the gods of the Torah, New Testament, and Quran. I mean, those are impossible, okay? But it's about the concept of gods and goddesses. I, I know that as a Muslim, generally, I know it's difficult for him to understand concepts and abstracts, but that's what a normal human being does. If if I go and look at a god and I look at the god of Christianity and I see this god is impossible, then I look, well, what is a god? What is the concept of a god? And then I try and imagine, would a god be able to do this and this and this and this? And then I go and look at the claims that are being made in the Bible, in the Torah, in the New Testament, in the Quran, for example, and I see, well, no, that's impossible. So it doesn't work. So this God is impossible. But then I think, well, what would a God look like? Or what would, what kind of a character, what kind of traits, what, what kind of attributes would a God have to have in order to be called a God? And so on and so forth. Then it's the concept of a God. And then I find, ah. Uh-uh, that does not make sense. This is that it just it doesn't gel. It doesn't work. Problem of evil is very is, is the most emotional, non intellectual argument. And then the problem of evil, it is an emotional and it is powerful, but it's not a non intellectual argument, not at all. And this has been explained over and over. It's just that he, this this Muhammad teacher, he doesn't understand this. Because he doesn't understand science, he doesn't understand philosophy, and he doesn't understand atheists, non-believers. And this is why he comes up with this, it's an emotional, powerful, but non-intellectual argument. It's not that the idea of no God, no creator, no cause, no sustainer, no maintainer actually carries any intellectual weight. No, it is highly intellectual if you go and look at the problem of evil. Because if you look at the problem of evil, particularly then if you go to animals, for example, why would a wasp lay the eggs in the eye of another insect so that her children can eat up the um, this, this other insect from the inside and, and make, you know, create this intolerable suffering for this animal? Why would you make an animal suffer just so that another animal can thrive? Isn't there a better way of doing that? Can't he put his eggs like like other you know other species do? Lay them in water or put them wherever, but not inside another you know living creature. So this problem of evil is not exactly non-intellectual at all. But I think he's been running away from this all his life. He's never confronted, or he's never been confronted by anybody who has a little bit of a you know triple-digit IQ. The majority of heavy wars that have happened in the world have been in Europe. Okay, then seven minutes. Majority of wars have been in Europe. No, that's absolute nonsense. Um, yes, the Second World War. I mean, if, if he only looks at wars in the last hundred years, yeah, that, then it's true. Absolutely. But before that, I mean, I think he forgets that Muslims went and in, they invaded Egypt, the whole of North Africa, all the way into Spain, into France. And then on the other side, they invaded all of Persia, all of Syria. They invaded Turkey, or what today is Turkey. They invaded what today is Greece. They went all the way up to Austria. So what is he talking about the majority of wars have been in Europe? No, that is not true. The wars that the Muslims were fighting on on the Indian 
um, what was it, a subcontinent? That is atrocious what happened in those days. So, and then he very quickly goes and says, well, at well, a fundamental, fundamental level, level, why put the onus on I would say that why, why put the onus on us to answer the question, how does God exist or why, do, why does God exist? <laughs> That's unbelievable. What evidence is there that there is no causation and so on? Remember he said he will not explain the arguments that everybody knows them, he does anyway, and then he goes, makes claims, 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 and then bash Christianity, bash, 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 bash. Then he goes into preachings and saying for some reason monotheism is better than polytheism. Why is that? Based on what? It doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't work. Okay, to go back on this, to, to this, this um, onus, if you make a claim, the onus of evidence, the onus of proving what that your claim is correct is on you. You cannot say, I can fly, and then you need to come to me and say, well, prove that I can't. That doesn't work. And I can't, it, it, it doesn't work that you make any kind of claim. If you say that, they, that a God exists, you need to go and present the evidence for your claim that a God exists. And you can't say, well, if you can't disprove it, then this, this holds. No, it's the other way around. As long as you cannot, it doesn't exist. Okay, it's, it's on you. So I don't have to disprove something I don't claim. And if, if you and other theists are incompetent and unable to provide convincing evidence, gods don't exist. That's how easy it is. Because gods need to be demonstrated before they can exist. You can't just say the, the null hypothesis, the, the, the standard position is that there is a God. No, this is never the case. You always start from zero and zero is nothing exists. And then from there you start off and you say, well, we have this and therefore this exists. We have this, therefore this exists. And that is how you arrive at a conclusion. So if I, for example, see the white line in the sky, which bends gradually to the right or something, then I know, aha, uh -huh, that was an aeroplane flying along and then making a turn. Even if I don't see or hear an aeroplane, if, even if my senses do not see this, logic tells me that was an aeroplane. And therefore, you need to come up with evidence for the existence of a god. And you can't say there's a white line in the sky, and therefore this was a god painting it with his finger. You first have to go and say, aha, a god exists, he's capable of painting a white line in the sky, and that is why it was a god painting the white line in the sky. The same thing with the Quran. You first have to say, god exists, he's capable of writing a book, therefore the Quran was written by God. You can't say the Quran exists and therefore God exists. Just because the Quran says that the God exists and the Quran says that it was written by God, and then you say, aha, the, the, there you go, there you have it, God exists, and now you need to disprove this. No, that is not the way the cookie crumbles. All right. Then he says that, and now we, this is the highlight for me, angels, prophets, everything. I mean, all these superstitions, his brain is not geared for the 21st century because, now listen to this claim. Metaphysical entities of angels are just like metaphysical entities which we can't see, which are actually scientific. When you use metaphysical language in the, once again, the white man's world, post-colonial world, well, look, metaphysics is making a comeback in science. Look at quantum mechanics, look at quantum physics. They're not physical. Metaphysics is making a comeback in the white man's world, the post-colonial world, as quantum mechanics. Seriously, quantum mechanics is metaphysics. Not metaphysics, not as in, you know, in, in the philosophy, what there is, the, what, what exists and how does it exist, but the beyond physics usage. So because quantum mechanics is beyond physics, it's metaphysical. <laughs> I don't believe it. In other words, the human being is born predisposed to the idea of God. And then of course he goes, God reminded the human being, so there are signs and all these things, and therefore we have the fitra, the, the natural propensity to believe that God exists, which we don't have, which he has been shown millions of times is untrue, but he will go and propagate it again and again, and he will make this claim, and he will say these things with great confidence. And he will make it sound as though it is absolutely normal to think, yes, there is this natural propensity to believe that gods exist, which is not true. And then he says, well, then if, because we have to know that gods exist, we have to worship them. Why? I, why, why should I worship a god, especially if it's the one that is described in the Quran, a monster? 
And then, you know, it's, they, they all come with the same message, do as I tell you or else. This is the prophets. All prophets come with two things, a message and an yeah. evidence. All of the prophets came with a message and an evidence. One evidence. Evidence that is what would probabilistically not happen otherwise. This is what evidence is for him. An evidence is something yeah, which probabilistically would not happen otherwise. And those, message, those things, those evidences are many. Something that would probabilistically not happen otherwise. What? Say what? Evidence for me is what I can positively compare to reality. And not what probabilistically would not happen otherwise. Oh, I know. I don't understand it. Really, I don't know what he's trying to do. And nobody interrupts him. Nobody does anything. And he, he, he comes down with, you know, miracles. Why, why would he believe in miracles? Why would he believe in prophecies? Why? I mean, miracles, like they are claims of a, of a breakdown of the laws of physics. And he says, yep. Why not? Prophecies. What prophecies? There are no prophecies in the Quran or the, the, the Sunnah. We're going to talk about this on, on the Genetonic show about the end times and prophecies that, that are supposedly made. No. So, what is the reason why atheism is becoming popular? It's very easy. Number one, it's the incompetence of those who claim that gods exist. They don't give us any good reason to believe this, so why should we believe? That's it. And number two, it's education. We are now learning about reality. We are learning that a bolt of lightning is not an angry Zeus or something like that. This is the way that it works. We are getting more educated, theists are failing, and that is why this belief in gods is slowly dropping off. It's slowly just going away. And Islam is dying because it is making the most incredible claims. And that's why Islam is dying the fastest. So F for fail once again. And the entire video was just, you know, again, another childish repetition of the cosmological argument and then the fine tuning. Nothing new here, I'm sorry to say. Okay. That's it. I've spoken longer than I actually thought I would. If you like it, thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down by all means. But I'd love to hear why you're doing it. Thank you. See you next time in the next video. Bye.